Hey everyone, this is Captain Kyle. We're here at Shorely 41 with Lexa Doig, very talented actress and all kinds of stuff, and we're going to talk about sci-fi. So how are you enjoying the Baltimore area so far? So far, I haven't seen much of it. I've seen uh, the drive-in at night and the inside of the hotel. So, but that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I love Baltimore. I used to come sort of around this area-ish when I was a kid a little bit because I have family that lives in Ocean Pines, I think it is, or Ocean City, something like that. So when I was a kid, we used to go there. Very cool. I have to ask, you've been in a lot of different genre TV shows, but then you've had your share of normal ones. Is, it an, is there a difference preparing for like a genre TV show where there's like weird technology and, you know, the, the more normal roles? Um, with the genre stuff, sometimes what you need to learn about is the universe that the show takes place in. Like, so there's sometimes a little bit more research. If there's another language that you have to learn uh, in terms of a fictional language or the, the um, fictional technology of the show, often with sci-fi, is you kind of have to know, like I said, the world building that they've done within it as opposed to, you know, stuff that takes place contemporarily or real life. There isn't really a ton that you have to learn for that, other than your lines and understanding the character. But in terms of character building, it's the same whether you're doing, you know, genre stuff, period stuff, or contemporary stuff. You, you just have to get kind of behind the, the headspace of the characters. But in your roles, do you prefer playing villains like Talia or Sonia, though villains is always subjective, or the more heroic characters? Um, I don't really have a preference. The thing about villains, though, is they don't necessarily see themselves as the villains, right? Like, they, they you know, everybody's the hero of their own story, and to a villain, they're the hero of their story. Um, especially with somebody like Sonia Valentine from Continuum. She was somebody who I think was pushed to a place of doing what I would think are horrible things. Just terrible, terrible, terrible things. Um, but in pursuit of something greater. And somebody like Talia, I think, is just kind of a chaotic evil <laughs> character or chaotic neutral maybe but um, at this oh my god I just let my nerd show um, <laughs> fully went D&D &D, uh, alignment but um, at the same time uh, I, I don't really have a preference per se but the, the bad guys in some respects are a lot of fun Talia is so much fun to play Sonia wasn't fun she was a challenge but it was a good challenge I really liked trying to figure her out very cool I mean yeah I like to see that you're a D&D &D fan <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Not overly huge. We don't play that often, but yeah, we've, we've been known to roll up some characters and play from time to time. <laughs> One of us. <laughs> yes, yes. So you played a lot of doctors. Why do you think you get cast as doctors so much? Because I sound smart. <laughs> I'm actually, it's a funny thing, because when you work in, in genre stuff, uh, there's a lot of techno babble, and I happen to be actually good at it. And it's a it's a funny thing that I've noticed with actors that some people just naturally are good at it, and other people struggle with it and, and have to work hard at it. Michael and I both, for whatever reason, just naturally happen to be able to wrap our mouths around the techno babble, which is not unlike medical speak. So um, it's not difficult for me to learn that stuff. So uh, that might have something to do with it that I'm pretty good with the techno speak. Plus, I, I speak with authority on things I know nothing about. Which might also be why I get hired as, to play doctors. So, so you excel at lying. That is awesome. Yes, I'm a very, very good bullshitter. So you're a D&D &D fan. So were you a sci-fi fan and everything before you started getting cast in a lot of genre shows? Yeah, I kind of was a bit of a, a, a sci-fi fan prior to being an actor and prior to getting cast and stuff. One of the first things I was ever cast in actually was uh, called Tech War, which was a um, William Shatner show. Uh, and I freaked out when I got the part because I was like, I'm working for Captain Kirk! Um, but at the same time, uh, I like sci-fi. I like the ability to tell these metaphorical stories um, through the lens of, of a fantastical kind of universe. Um, and I liked sci-fi growing up. I used to watch Star Trek all the time. My brother is a nerd, and he's a proud nerd, so I'm proud of him. But his friends used to call him Spock when he was a kid. And thus my nickname was Little Spock because I was his little sister. Fascinating. Yeah, fascinating. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Moving to a totally different subject was the setting of Continuum was Vancouver. Do you think that more shows and more movies need to be set in Canada? Is, is it underrepresented in, in TV and movies? I'm Canadian, so I'm going to say yes. But at the same time, it, we're not actually a huge country. A lot of stuff that is um, considered American television 
and genre sort of American television is shot in Canada because it's cheaper to shoot there. And we're also really very good at it. But the thing is, is in terms of is it underrepresented? I don't necessarily think so. We're a country of like 36 million people. We're not actually technically a very big country. <laughs> Geographically, we're pretty large, but you know, population wise, we're not. So I mean, would you say the same thing about Norway? Like, do I need to see more things take place in Norwegian cities? I don't think so. But I'd love it because I think Toronto's pretty neat and interesting. Here's an off-the-wall question. When you are about to do a scene with a male co-star and you have to kiss them, is it your normal practice to offer them a Tic Tac? Uh, gum, usually, or one of those little breath mints, those Listerine breath mints. Uh, but I put one in my mouth first because I'm like, I might be have like rank breath. So let's just pass around. Let's just share the love. Let's just all take mints. Yeah because that's nice. So you would recommend that for anyone who has to get into a kissing scene? Anyone, yeah. But, you, you know, I, that's, that's a given. I think we all know that as actors. <laughs> We're all aware that we got to make sure that the dragon breath is managed. Yeah. Do a quick speed round here. Favorite color? Uh, purple. Favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip from Baskin Robbins. Very good. Favorite season? Summer. I like you like a hat. Favorite book? Watership Down by Richard Adams. Very nice. Favorite musical group? Ooh, that's a tough one. It's a toss-up between the Beatles and Queen. Both good choices. We'll go with both. Yeah. And finally, favorite Avenger? Ooh, this is a tough one. Are we talking the OG? Are we talking the original six? Does it have to be one of the original six, or can we expand? You can expand beyond. There's so many Avengers. They're pretty much most of the Marvel Universe. I know. It's a tough one. It's a toss-up. I'm going to say... That's like asking me to pick a favorite child. That's unkind. It's a toss-up. Oh yeah. Oh, that. Well, it depends on the day. Which one is kissing my ass the most? I, that's my favorite child. Um, I would say it's a toss-up between T'Challa, Black Panther, and I don't know, Widow or Cap? Widow or Cap? Widow or Cap? We're gonna go with Widow. Yeah, Black Widow. All right. Well, she did sacrifice herself, so it's all. Yes. Sorry, spoilers. Spoiler alert. <laughs> now, I understand you have three children. Do you have still have cats, and how many do you have? We have two cats, and their names are Hudson and Hicks. And yes, those are the characters from Aliens. Michael named the cats. So any new projects coming up that you can discuss with us? Not, no, I can't discuss them. <laughs> I can't. Well, I, there's, I'm doing something that is genre-related, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say that I'm doing it yet. And um, there's another show that I was working on for Netflix called Virgin River that uh, I don't know when it starts airing, but I know we start shooting the second season in September. Um, and from, on Hallmark, the Aurora Tea Garden Mysteries, I think we're, they're doing a marathon next month in August or something. I'm not sure. Something like that. Well, we'll put your social media down in the description so people can find out when you can talk about stuff. Right. There you go. Any message for your fans? Hi. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Lexa, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And everyone, thanks for watching. And if you're in the area, come down to Shorely 41 so you can meet this wonderful lady and all these other people. And as always, have fun and follow your fandom. Hi, this is Michael Shanks, and you're watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The fate of the universe may depend on it. Oh, plus, and have fun, and follow your fandom.